Prelude to the Encounter The earliest memory I have is sexual. I was four years old and I knew about sex, a clear indication my foundations had been tampered with, and I have a memory of feeling of the person who molested me. This is my story, not someone else's, so I am not in the least bit interested in outing anyone's closet of skeletons, but mine. Airing my dirty secrets to find my freedom and own my power is my personal choice. The law of nature is the weak gets preyed upon and devoured. I was a pretty fractured child, bleeding and leaving a scent trail for predators to pick on, and they did pick on my trail. The first time I was raped, I was probably six or seven years old. I remember the fear and dread that gripped me when the three preteens grabbed me and dragged me into an abandoned building. I had a foreboding of something horrible and disastrous about to happen. I begged, pleaded, cried, anything to prevent me from being dragged into that slaughterhouse. I was pinned to the floor, pants peeled off and penetrated. The sharp, mind-blistering pain, the fear of being dominated, the powerlessness of being broken, violated, and taken. And worse of all, the worthlessness, shame, disgrace, disgust, and uselessness that overwhelmed and settled afterwards. I laid there like a crumpled piece of used dirty tissue as I bled and cried, and they walked off. I picked myself up, gathered myself, and walked home like nothing had happened. When the predator waits and no repercussion happens, they realize they can get away with it. Soon the word gets out that there was an easy prey of slim pickings, so they swooped in like beastly ugly vultures and vampires to devour. I cannot honestly say I remember the pain emphatically. I don't even remember being raped. I remember looking at myself being raped. Somehow, I seemed to have a detachment about it, like it was happening to someone else, and I was watching it. I understand that's the mind's way of coping with intense trauma. For the few other times I was raped, I was a witness to it, silently in a corner watching it happen to me. I do remember one incident where two teenage boys were trying to lure me into a perfect slaughterhouse, and I had that petrified look on my face, but didn't know how to escape. Unexpectedly, some lady saw my look and came running to me to rescue me. They fled and I was partly relieved and partly disappointed. That is the most discombobulating thing about rape. Some part of me actually enjoyed the sadistic pain, as if I was betraying me. I was so confused and distraught. I hated myself. How could I enjoy someone demeaning, bastardizing, and devaluing me? Death seemed like a gift, a beautiful escape from a life of uselessness. This was how I grew up. This was the inner reality I secretly nourished and learned to live with. If I thought I had lived in hell, the being beaten up and brutally penetrated was minute compared to the hell I later experienced. Again, this is my divulging of my experience, and not in the least bit of an attempt to divulge anybody else's secrets. So I intentionally am weaving a story with only me as the active character. As a child who has been sexually active since four years old, I began to enjoy sex myself. Everyone was using me for it, and in the midst of the pain and trauma, I experienced some pleasure. So I decided to pursue that pleasure on my own. I began acting out with friends, both male and female, and it felt good to do sexual acts on them on our terms. Eating that forbidden fruit and getting away with it. It was a sweet, dirty feeling. The beautiful sexual orgasm was great. 
However, the empty and devoid gaping feeling afterwards was the most dreadful, depressing and gnawing feeling. Sex was not made for children. Something about a child's makeup is completely destroyed when sex is introduced into their fragile lives. I felt like a walking corpse, doing sexual things to feel better, but devastating my life more and more. And then I was caught. I won't go into details of this. Suffice to say, in the rage of punishment, I was mutilated and tortured for two days, because the rationale was I was being a pawn of the devil, and that devil was going to be tortured out of me. Unfortunately, the torturing and mutilating crossed into life-threatening. Broken nose, sliced and bleeding, I had to be rushed to the hospital. At the hospital, I was presented as a demonized six-year-old indulging in incest with his relatives. Forget that I was broken nose and bleeding, it seemed like my demonic expressions justified the horror that was meted out to me. The beauty of the Western world is something like this couldn't have happened. Child Protective Services would have swooped in hopefully and taken me, immediately. Hopefully. But in a third world country with third world reasoning, I deserved what happened to me, and I believed it. My young life was a series of rapists and abusers. The ones who loved me the most were the ones constantly violating and raping me. And when I tried to find healing and peace, I sought dysfunctional routes that only resulted in compounding me more and leaving me more frayed and tattered. This was my life. This is what I harbored inside. This is why suicide was so appealing and promising. It was an escape from a world that consistently raped me. A world that was faithful to devour and ravage me. Suicide was hope to me.